for this first antique farmhouse thrift flip DIY that I'm going to do with you today. I pulled some mason jars from my stash. They're not antique, but they will work well for this. And then I also pulled some crocheted pieces, a doily and this crocheted collar that I found at the Goodwill outlet bins. And then I also pulled from my stash of vintage and broken jewelry, some pieces that I'll use and some twine. And I'm also using some Mod Podge. This is the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. You don't need to use dishwasher safe, but that happens to be what I have. And then also some battery operated tea lights. I love these things. I order them off of Amazon. I get a big box of them and I use them in everything. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is to work with the larger of the three mason jars. I'm going to use the back of the jar because I want a flatter surface. So I'm just taking my Mod Podge and I'm applying a thin coat to the back of the mason jar. And this does not have to be perfect. It, you're not gonna see this at all. The doily is actually gonna go on top of the Mod Podge. And then I just take my doily and I'm just flattening it out and um, applying it to the Mod Podge that I just applied to the jar. And I'm just trying to get the doily as flat as I can. And some of the edges need a little extra Mod Podge. So I'm just gonna take my brush and apply a little extra Mod Podge over top of the doily. I I'm going to focus on the edges, but I am also going to apply some to the top of the doily just to make sure that the doily is really on there well. I want to mention that this video is part of the Flip and Friday collaboration hosted every month by my friend Jamie over at Border Bananas. Please check out her channel and the playlist, which will both be linked in my description box below. And now that my doily's applied, I'm going to set it aside to dry and I'll work on my next mason jar. And this next mason jar is even easier because I don't need the Mod Podge to apply the lace or the doily. I'm just going to wrap it around the neck of the jar because this was crocheted so that it would go around a person's neck. So it has a nice curve to it and that works really well with putting it around the top of the jar. I'm just measuring to see how much I need and then I'm going to take my scissor and just cut the doily, the crocheted collar I should call it, to the right length for the top of this jar. I'm just going to take that piece of collar and wrap it around the top and close it with the button. I don't even need glue for this one. And then I just take my twine and wrap it around and around and around the top of the jar, leaving enough on each end so that I can tie a bow. But before I tie the bow, I'm going to slip this little piece of vintage jewelry onto the twine. It actually has a little charm loop, just like, you know, a, a charm that you'd wear on a necklace. So that makes it easy to attach it to the twine. And then I go ahead and tie my bow. with the addition of one of these fabulous tea lights and just stick it in the jar and this little one is done. This second one is made in basically the same way but with this piece of jewelry I don't have that nifty little loop to put it on the twine so I'm going to just use a little bit of hot glue to attach it to the center of the bow. Now that the one with the Mod Podge is dry, I'm going to go ahead and embellish this one. For this one, I'm just using a little white button from my stash, which I am going to glue on with hot glue. 
And then I'm also going to attach a little gold heart to the center of the button, just to give it that antique feel. And here's the third one, all embellished. I think they're so pretty. I really like these mason jars. For the next thrift flip, I'm going to be using this caddy that came from the thrift store for $1.50. I'll also be using some white chalk paint as well as these IOD stamps that I have. I purchased these a little while back. I love them. They are like marmalade and cream. I forget all the different types of products that are advertised. First thing I'm going to do is give this two coats of white chalk paint. I'm not worried about the red underneath. I am gonna sand and it is going to show, but I kind of like the red. It's a little different. But if you were concerned about the red, you could obviously paint it with a darker color first and then paint the white on top of it. And here it is all painted up. And then I'm just gonna take my little sander. This is by Black & Decker. I've shown it to you guys before. I got mine from Ace Hardware, but it is also sold on Amazon. And I'm just going to rough up the edges just a little bit. I want this to look like a caddy that maybe had jars of something in it. In this case, it's gonna be marmalade. So, you know, just something where maybe it came with several jars and it's been used for different purposes since its original purpose. That's kind of what I'm going for here. Here it is all distressed. You can kind of see the red coming through. Again, you could totally do it in a neutral if that was your preference, but I like the red. It gives it a little bit of personality. I asked my husband, Chris, if I should use the marmalade advertising or the milk bottle advertising. He said milk was too basic. We went with marmalade. Maybe it was filled with a bunch of jelly jars at one time. So I decided to use one of the marmalade labels. Here I have a slightly dampened paper towel. I'm just wiping off the dust from the distressing because I want to make sure I'm stamping onto a nice clean surface. And then I'm going to take my stays on ink. This is ink I've shown you before. I get it at Michael's, but it's great. You don't need to seal it. It's permanent ink. You can even use it on ceramics and glass, which is kind of neat. And I just take my stamp pad and I'm covering my stamp with the ink. And then I'm just going to carefully take my stamp and apply it to the side of my little caddy. Now, true disclosure, I am not great at stamping. I'm gonna be real honest. And I did get a little shadowing. So, you know, hopefully I'll get better with practice. For the second side, I'm thinking it will be easier to do it on its end. So that's why I turned the caddy on its end so that I can go ahead and stamp it when it's in this position and kind of standing up over it allows me to see what I'm doing just a little bit better. Now on this one, I didn't press down hard enough. So the first one I told you I pressed too hard in some places and I got a little shadowing. This one I didn't press hard enough. You know, again, I'm not great at this yet, but I'm learning. And here is the caddy styled with the candles. I wasn't intending to do this, but I really like the way that they look together. I actually think I'm going to use the caddy in my bathroom with these candles, but I'm gonna put the caddy on the back of my toilet with one candle, I think, and a roll of toilet paper, which I'm going to show you here in a second. But I really like the way the caddy and the candles look together. For this next project, I'm using a frame from my stash. I have no idea where I got this frame, but I really like it. And then I'm also using some burlap. This is a recycled coffee sack, which I get from the coffee shops around here. But if you don't have that, they sell burlap at the craft stores. So I go ahead and take the backing out of my frame and then also the glass. 
At first I was thinking I wasn't gonna use the glass, but I am going to use the glass. So I'm just gonna use it to cut a piece of burlap that's the appropriate size. And I'll go ahead and attach the burlap to the glass using hot glue. And then I just stick the burlapped glass, burlap covered glass back into the frame and I'm putting the backing to the frame back in. And all I'm going to do is use some of this broken and vintage jewelry to create a little floral scene. This is similar to something I saw on Pinterest. The picture on Pinterest was not associated with any Pinterest account. I don't know why, but you can just know that I got this idea from Pinterest. What I was showing you there is that that little piece is probably from an old bracelet and it says something about the rain and dan dancing in the rain or something. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but anyway, all I'm doing here is laying out the scene and really you can do this however you want to do, but I'm just trying to kind of make something similar to what I saw on Pinterest. And then I'm just using my hot glue to attach the broken pieces of jewelry to the burlap. And the hot glue works really well. I don't think I need any stronger kind of glue. This is working really well. I'm using some short pieces of twine that I pre-cut as stems to the flowers. In the inspiration piece on Pinterest, they actually used old jewelry chains, but I didn't have any. So that would be really neat if you had some of those. But in lieu of that, the twine works just fine. In the inspiration piece, they had some really tiny, pretty faux greenery. I don't have anything that looks like that. So I decided to use this reindeer moss that I got from the Dollar Tree. And again, this works really well too. And then it's fun to just keep adding embellishments from my stash until I am pleased with the way that it looks. I added a final flower at the end with some little pieces of jewelry to look like leaves. And here's what the finished product looks like. I think it's just adorable. I'm going to use all of these antique farmhouse thrift flips in my master bath together once I get that redecorating done. So that's all that I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. Please go ahead and check out Jamie's channel from Border Bananas as well as the playlist which will be available in my description box and I'll see you next time. Bye!